In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful, today I would like to talk about the effect of debt um, and the fact of debt and how it affects uh, countries and nations. One thing that is very unique about the United States of America, that while it is the richest country in the world, uh, more than 99% of its people are in debt. What does that mean? And how is this debt accumulating? See, what happens is that we all have wages, okay? And our buying power is based upon our wages. If we don't have wages, we can't buy, okay? And so how do the corporations uh, deal with the fact that we have limited wa wages? So there's supply and demand. Demand is based upon your wages. You can't demand if you don't have wages, okay? So your demand says, okay, I can buy this much. Okay. Corporations, they, can, they will have to keep supply this much and they can only make X amount of dollars. So what do they do? They take your wages and add credit to it, give you debt. Okay. So that you can buy more so that they can create more supply. So you create more supply and you, and, and, and so they give you this credit. Okay. And so what happens is, to, there's a lot of psychological effects of, 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 of the temptation of falling into debt. There's a lot of psychological effects of, of being in debt. And I don't want to go into that. But what I want to uh, discuss is the fact that when your wages, if you're not living at the level of your wages, then you are going to use credit so that you can live beyond your means. And you can, uh, and, and this is what, uh, corporate America expects. The corporate America expects uh, people to live beyond their wages. So it expects that people have credit, people buy things upon debt, and then the psychological effects of debt that have an effect upon health, that have an effect upon uh, buying things and doing th things based upon the impulse of doing things kicks in. And what does it mean for an entire nation, this, the richest country in the world, where 99% of its people are in debt? It means that, uh, you, know, you know, in the Quran, uh, the holy book of the Muslims, uh, God says, well, that, there, that, that being in debt, being caught up in debt, is like being a slave. I mean, you live your life week to week and month to month just paying off bills. Uh, at that point, you're nothing more than a slave. And so it wouldn't be wrong, at least from the Quranic perspective, to say that you know more than 99% of America is enslaved in the in, in in the economic world that America has created, and and now this same uh, credit system of putting people upon credit where they can live on credit, and then they have to not only be in debt. See, it's one thing to be in debt, but then it's another thing you have to pay off interest and the, uh, the effects of interest, compound interest, it leaves people enslaved um, at two levels. You become enslaved to your own desires because you become impulsive and you become used to buying things only because you want it and based on your impulsive. And then second, you become enslaved because now you're living your life week to week, month to month, hand to mouth, and there's no savings. America needs to understand that we can only come out of, we can only have a happy life. We can have a life uh, of, of more joy if we learn to live within the means that we have. Now, it's another thing that, uh, you know, uh, our wages are the same and the prices of things because of inflation are increasing. So if a shoe was $50, your salary was, let's say, $2,000 a month, that same shoe is now, is there $50? $80. Inflation is increasing the prices. Your buying power is decreasing. And so what that is doing to the country is poorer people are getting poorer, richer people are getting richer, and, uh, and, and the middle class is becoming divided, mostly the middle class, even though it struggles. And, you know, worse, the middle class would get hit the worst because the middle class, even though it's getting smaller, but it's always trying to live in accordance to the dreams of the upper class, and because of this inflation, because of debt, it, it just uh, sometimes cannot work out. And so uh, we need to learn 
as as Americans, as, as American Muslims, as Muslims across the world, that we should live at the level of our uh, lifestyle. If we make a certain wage, we should live within those wages. We should not even want to be in debt. And not only that, living in debt is one thing, but then there's something more than that. And that is that we have to learn to save. Save $50 a month, save $100 a month, save $200 a month, save something, and put it away for uh, difficult times. Anticipate that there will be a period of uh, six months of unemployment. Put that money away. And so this is very important uh, to understand how to deal with debt, to understand the effect of debt. And I'm not even ta I'm talking about the debts of the individuals within the country. I'm not even talking about national debt and the effect of the national debt upon the individuals. No, I'm just simply talking about the debt. The average American family has a debt of eight thousand um, dollars. That's that's hard to deal with, and uh, may God uh, make it easy for us. La sahla illa ma jaltu sahla. There's nothing easy except what God makes easy, and uh, may um, we all um, learn to deal with our debt and become stress-free as far as debt is concerned, and come out of this form of slavery. Jazakumullah uh, khairan.